What's good sports gamers and today I'll be going over with you the different moves you have at your disposal to finish at the rim, how to do them, and when to do them to become a more efficient player in the lane in NBA 2K23 on both generations of consoles. So alright, let's get it. First off we're going to mess around with how you want to achieve your layups by going into your settings from the main menu, going to features and then over to controller settings and scroll down to shot timing. By default it's set to shots only, which means your layups are based on your player's attributes and how open you are when you attempt a shot. And only your jumpers do you need to time, and I suggest leaving your setting on this. By switching to layups only, you now will only have the shot meter for your layups, while jumpers are based on attributes and how open you are. Set it to real player percentage, we'll just have the player's rating take over near the rim. And shots and layups, a skill gap can be created here if you can practice getting good enough at nailing your layups with a meter. But of course, you will probably finish in a paint like Clint Capella at first while you try to get good at it. Which again, I recommend leaving this on shots only so you only have to manually time your jump shots. But if you want to create a bit of a skill gap for yourself, you can put it on shots and layups to help increase your success in the paint. But of course, you'll have to manage the added stress of trying to nail a layup while in traffic but these are the four options you have to use. So with that, let's get into the moves. First off, new to NBA 2K23 is the quick scoop layups. Scoop layups have been such a fun addition to the finishing game in 2K23 for the vertically challenged players. Reason being, they're so hard to time and block because the ball handler keeps the ball in one hand the whole way and getting the shot off faster than the usual one, two with both hands touching the ball. Giving smaller players a near guaranteed two points when the lane is open, similar to those who can dunk. So this is best utilized when the closest defender to the rim is behind you or coming from the side. And there's nothing between you and the rim, because although chase down blocks aren't as prevalent, time is money when driving. Very few instances, which I'll go over, does a scoop layup work if the defender is already in good position. He will block you. And to pull it off successfully, once you're about to hit the free throw line, if you're holding turbo, let go of it now. And then you hold the right stick on your controller to the left or right while you're driving to the hoop. And with the left stick, make sure you're aiming it to the side you want to finish towards with the hand you selected. Because doing a scoop layup with your right hand can look very different depending on what side of the hoop you're aiming for. Now one specific instance where the scoop layup works is taking advantage of its quick lunge forward animation on well positioned players by using their momentum against them and flipping it back the other way. See here I move my ball handler to the right and aim my right stick to the right to bring the ball across his face and past his outstretched arms. Next we got the Euro step. If done right a Euro will get you past the defender by faking one way before bringing back the other. It can also lunge you forward quicker as I like to do using it with big men who are a bit slower footed. So you want to use this to get yourself through traffic into unoccupied space near the rim by using defenders momentum against them. Best time to do it is again when there is space open near the rim that a defender isn't occupying. And to maximize the results you can wait until you get the defender to open up and start sprinting at you or about to commit to your movement so they're loose in their stance and unable to stop their momentum. And to pull it off there are two ways. You let go of turbo and double tap square on PlayStation or X on Xbox while then aiming the left stick towards your off ball hand. Or in two motions if the ball is in your right hand, you move the right stick to your ball hand and quickly hold it to your left. So your second motion will be aiming towards where you want to finish your Euro step at. Downside of the Euro is you will automatically go for a shot when you attempt it, so be sure at worst there's only one defender left for you to beat. As for the cradle layup, you're only going to utilize this when you have a defender riding your hip and you can trigger a flyby animation for them, giving you a clean look at the hoop. And to pull this move off, you double tap square on your controller for PlayStation and X for Xbox while moving your left stick towards your ball hand. Or you can do it in two motions. If the ball is in your right hand, first move the right stick to your left, then quickly move and hold it to your right. So you flick the right stick towards your off ball hand, then move and hold it to your ball hand side. The Euro and Cradle are opposites of each other, so it's easy to remember. With the Euro, you're finishing with your right stick in your off ball hand, and Cradle, you're finishing your right stick 
in your ball hand. Now let's go over the hop step. Hop step is great because it can be used as a move to score or just to get you into the paint to look for kickout opportunities. Or an easy score if the user defender jumps, of course. Scoring wise, it's best to avoid using this when the defender is riding your hip and only use when there isn't a defender parked right under the hoop. So you're then able to get up a shot past the defender. Again, the huge benefit of the hop step is you don't automatically go for a shot if you don't want to and only commit if you see the lane is open. To pull off a hop step, you tap the square button if you're on PlayStation or X if you're on Xbox and aim the left stick in the direction you wanna hop towards. Or you can move your right stick either to the left or right, then hold it back again in the same direction while you're driving to the hoop. So you're hitting left and then left again or right and then right again. Now, if you notice your hop step didn't get you as open as you would have liked, you let go of the right stick before he leaps or don't tap the square X button again. But if you notice you're now suddenly open, you can continue the animation and go for a shot by tapping the square or X button or continuing to hold the right stick throughout the whole animation. It's also tough to get the hang of beholding the right trigger as well. He will attempt a dunk if he's close enough. But if you let go of turbo before he jumps, he will go for a layup. And again, you can cancel going up for a shot by letting go of the right stick or not tapping the button again before he leaps. So you're able to look around and see who's open on the perimeter. Next, we have the normal layup. In the open court, players have different layup packages that will allow them to avoid incoming defenders better than others, which is when most of the time you're going to use a normal layup when the lane is clear. Now you will run into problems when a defender cuts you off and forces you into a contested layup or jumper if the defender has stopped all of your forward progress towards the rim, even though you're still aiming towards it. Which is why you want to use the free throw line and the low block to the elbow as a gauge to tell you if you're going to get a clean layup or not. You beat them here, you're probably good to go. If you don't, it's best not to attempt it at all. And to pull off a normal layup, you're going to use the left stick to aim towards the side you want to finish and then hold the right stick directly up at the rim. Now aiming the left stick in different directions can get you different animations. And because the game gives you the best layup animation that makes sense depending on where the defenders are, you're going to take advantage of that specifically when defenders are coming from your side to move them out of the way with stronger players to possess the bully badge by aiming our left stick towards them and holding the right stick up. Weaker players won't be able to do this as consistently as they'll opt for the underhand layup more frequently when you try it here. Next we have floaters. This is another move that needs to be in the smaller player's arsenal or anybody's really because of its purpose. The floater isn't a move you seek out, it's something you go to as a counter for defenders parking too deep in the paint. Maybe wait for the scoop layup, who knows? and giving you a bit of breathing room to quickly flick up a shot. You'll know when they're parking too deep and giving you ample space. And to do a float, you hold the right stick down while driving, and if executed correctly, it will go right over the big who's trying to block your shot. This is also a move that will benefit from having your shot time and set to shots and layups, which forces you to time your layups like a regular jumper. Now let's go over the reverse layup. And this move aims to get you a clean shot if you're driving from the sidelines and the paint on the ball side is occupied by forcing yourself out the other way. If the defender is already on the other side of the rim, this move is pointless as you'll be going right towards him. And to do a reverse layup while driving, you hold the right stick to the right if you're driving from the right side of the court and to the left if you're coming from the left. And if you hold the right trigger while driving baseline, the player will attempt a reverse dunk if he has that dunk in his arsenal. Now let's get into dunking and let's start with the two hand dunk. You look for these over the one hand variety as they're harder to block and most two hand dunk animations start closer to the rim. So you're gonna wanna look to trigger them as soon as you're inside the free throw line. And to trigger a two hand dunk, you hold the right trigger on your controller and hold the right stick directly up while driving close to the rim. Now we got the one hand dunk with the player strong or off hand. One hand dunks allow you to trigger them further away and players will take off faster depending on what hand you're using. So get into practice mode to figure that out. And you activate a one hand dunk by holding the right trigger on your controller and holding the right stick either to the player's left or right. And which side you choose will determine the hand he dunks with. 
A lot of the times the hand you dunk with will be obvious based on where the defender is coming from as you're always gonna want to dunk with the hand furthest away from them. Next, we got the normal skill dunk that we have all come to love by now. I kid, maybe. And these dunks you can do on both PS4, Xbox One, and PS5 and Xbox Series S and X console. And skill dunks allow you to attempt contact dunks at a higher frequency. And it's up to you whether you hit it or not by nailing the meter, which will be the same meter you have set for your jumpers. So again, if you wanna pull off a contact dunk, this is how you get them the most frequent. And to attempt the skill dunk, you hold the right trigger on your controller, and in two right stick motions, move the right stick up and then quickly hold it straight down and let go at the appropriate time to successfully jam it home. And these next few dunks I'm gonna go over are next gen only. And we'll start with how to hang on the rim, which you will perform by doing a two hand dunk, which you pull off by first holding the right trigger on your controller and never let go of it. That's how you're gonna be able to hang on the rim. And then aim and hold the right stick down on your controller. Once you dunk the ball, you'll continue to hang on the rim if you're still holding the right trigger. And while holding it, you'll be able to swing yourself left and right with the left stick and pull yourself up on the rim with the right stick. But be careful, you don't want to get caught slipping still hanging on the rim while your opponent is going up the court. Let's look into the rim hang skill dunk, which again will let you be able to pull off more frequent contact dunks, but will make you have to time the dunk with the meter. And you do this by again holding the right trigger on your controller throughout the whole animation. And then in two right stick motions, aim the right stick down, let go, and then hold it down for a second time, where you will then let it go when it's time to let go based on the meter. Now again, while continuing to hold the right trigger, you'll be able to swing your body around while you're hanging on the hoop with the left stick. Now to pull off a one and two hand flashy dunk, you wanna hold the right trigger and then in two motions, flick the right stick down and then hold it up to perform a one-handed dunk. And to perform a two-handed dunk, you hold the right trigger and then in two motions, flick the right stick up and then hold it up again. So one hand is down and then up and for two hands, it's up and then up again. Next, we got the spin gather. This move is nasty because of how fast the ball handler can pull it off and immediately go for a shot if you hold the stick throughout the whole animation. It beats overly aggressive defenders trying to wall you off one way by going the other way. And you are forced to go up immediately for the shot eater by letting go of the right stick before he jumps. And you pull this move off by rotating the right stick from your ball hand around the bottom to your off ball hand and holding it there. If you opened up a shot for yourself, continue to hold it and let the animation play out. If the defense recovered, let go before he jumps, giving yourself time to check for open teammate. Now, if you're holding turbo while performing this, he will go for a dunk, whether you're holding it the whole time or press the right trigger right before he took off. And lastly, let's talk about transitioning from gathers into dunks. I mentioned briefly, you can transition from a spin gather into a dunk, but you're able to do that with all of them if you're close enough to the rim by simply holding the right trigger after activating any of the different moves I have gone over. And just hold it all the way through or right before takeoff. And the player, if he's close to the rim, will transition into a dunk attempt. And with that, I hope this video was able to help you attack the paint better in NBA 2K23. And for those new to the series, help formulate a game plan on how to attack, period. And if you like the video and are new, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. And thank you to all my longtime watchers. Really appreciate every single one of you. All right, people, I'm Chris from Sports Gamers Online. Thank you all for watching and be good, y'all.